internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Right, hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad. Turn up your sound. We got another interview with my friend Swami here. How you doing, Swami? Hey, Brad. Magic Brad, good to see you. I like that little magic trick where you step <laughs> your, your card into a sound volume. Yeah, everybody knows how it works. <laughs> it's not a real trick. But the idea is to brand myself and uh, the little arrow that goes up. You know, I do a lot of internet marketing-based stuff. And I'm finding that that three seconds is very valuable because that's when people are... You know, they don't see stuff very long, so I can at first three seconds to do a little something to. <laughs> and then That's I'm going to put an intro and an outro on here anyway, so it's going to blow up that three seconds. But I'm trying to make it into a habit <laughs> it's with my Instagram. Years, habit. Certainly, certainly, it doesn't take long for me. <laughs> Just got to make a commitment. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and berries, my friend Swami is a yoga instructor. He teaches meditation, and he's also in the psychic world. So he's deep into the spiritual aspect of things, and we're going to learn a few things, hopefully, or maybe peel a few onion skins back and get to the get to the core essence of who we actually are, right? That's a, bad, that's a great <laughs> way of saying it. Peel it back, because we don't have to learn it. We are it. Just have to... Rediscover it, awaken. Unlearning. It's interesting you bring that up because that's what I'm doing with the internet because the internet has changed business wise. And I've been in business all my life, so I've got these old things in my head of three to five percent response on a direct mail postcard. And that's oh. no longer the case. You know, seven seven uh, impressions before they they respond. That's no okay. longer the case. So oh. I have to relearn all that stuff, realizing that it's now seven thousand impressions before they even know you exist. <laughs> you know, it's changed a lot. So I'm peeling back the onion on my marketing and business logic. So maybe you can share a little bit about this. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about it on a smile time uh, just yesterday of right. the concept of some people look at psychics as being, oh, that's a bunch of hogwash. I don't believe that stuff. But if they understood that it's not magic, it's just being very tuned in to what's going on. I mean, like, when you get into martial arts, a person can react at a certain time because they almost sense that it's coming. You get into right. football and things like that. They just have this magic ability or basketball to fly and dunk that thing in the hoop because they've That's got it. this, this, they're in this tune, they're in the zone, kind of like. That's well said. I mean, everybody's got their gift, their intuition. Everybody does something and people go, how'd you do that? I go, I don't know, just, I just do that. <laughs> you know, and that's everybody has their own way you know how about this six-year-old kid or three-year-old kid who's playing mozart out of nowhere on the piano you know they it just everybody's got a gift maybe some are some some gifts are like the ability to make people feel at ease people person people. now coming from the magic world that's where you know i started doing magic as a kid and not not with the k with the c and uh, you know, doing magic shows and things like that with sleight of hand and making making cards and coins disappear and all that. And there's a thing in the magic world about uh, reading, and it's called cold reading. So a lot of psychics will end up doing that kind of stuff. And if it's done maliciously, it's wrong in my opinion. But sometimes they're doing it and they don't even know it. And I think that's a little bit better that if, if they're not intentionally trying to manipulate someone, you know what right. I mean? Right, right. Are you familiar well, with cold reading? I'm not not in cold readings and magic. Uh, cold readings, we do things on the stage. We call it platform mediumship, where there's a number of ways to do it, but you give messages to people in the audience fairly quickly. You give some evidence, they validate it, and then you give a message. Well, see so, the 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 aspect in the magic world. Not that I want to give away secrets and stuff, but uh, you know, the amazing Randy has been trying to debunk psychics and all that stuff for a long time. Because there are these charlatans that are out there doing stuff with like, like earpieces and stuff like that, doing psychic things. And but cold reading is, is a way of manipulating stuff. Like I'm I'm sensing over on the left hand side someone that be their, their name begins with an M. I'm I'm sensing an M, a M A, a, as a Margaret or Mary. Or, 
And then right. that person will stand up and go, my name's Mary. And right. that's just baiting that person in. So okay. if you're doing it maliciously and with the, you know, trying to be amazing and stuff, there's a way that cold readers can do that kind of stuff. And I would like to be able to separate that kind of stuff because I do believe in the actual being able to be intuitive and in tune and psychically tuned in, so to speak. There is. I mean, you're right on a great point here, Brad. The There is a movement right now. I don't know if it's actually conscious or not, but I'm noticing it. There's a whole new level of quality of mediumships and psychics teach, being taught out there that's high integrity, and they call it evidential. Well, the media evidential. So that, in other words, instead of saying, uh, I get an M, is there any, somebody with a name M? And she goes, I'm Mary. Okay. Now, you got to say, okay, now is your, uh, like, is your grandmother, you have to give real evidence. You can't yeah, just. Evidential. Yeah. Yes. I get it. Cool. And, and the, I, I have a certification in advanced psychic mediumship from the Lisa Williams school. And you may have heard of her. She had some TV shows in the past through Merv Griffin on psychic being a psychic medium. And she just gave us, drilled us to make us the really give real good evidence three at least three solid pieces not even we not like uh, blonde hair but you know something even better than that your grandmother baked the cookies with green sprinkles on it you know an example of something really really and and not just one piece but like at least three pieces of solid evidence that how could how could you even get those things you know something that happened in your past something that happened uh, recently, but your grandmother or mother has passed, and she's telling me about it right now. So that means she's still here with you. That's the goal is to really help people's hearts, to heal people's hearts. Yeah, I and think it, a lot of it. It depends on whether a person is like I'm. I'm sensing these things from your grandma. If they're making it up in their head, or if they're going a little further and accessing a higher consciousness, because there's things right. that happen in this right. physical world that you can't explain, but they're bizarre, like. Sometimes I'm working on my computer and I'm thinking about a topic of, uh, we'll say, um, uh, yoga practice. And I'll be typing it in. All of a sudden, a thing will, a, a, a notification will pop up and say yoga class. And at the same time, my wife will be on the phone talking to a client and she'll say the word yoga. Now, if that doesn't tell you something, it's too kind of weird coincidental to be for all that to be happening. So I think you got to pay attention because it's not... I don't think it was manipulated that my wife was talking with somebody and said yoga because Brad's typing yoga into his keyboard. You know, right. it was awesome. a, it was a, a coincidence. I call them. Some people say there are no coincidences, but I hyphenate it. It's multiple incidences happening at the same time. You get in tune. Uh, there's all kinds of. Yeah, there are people. Uh, you, uh, for many years, I was skeptical. Uh, didn't believe this stuff. And skeptics, I think, is a very healthy state of mind to be in. But if you're cynical, the yeah. difference is the cynic will not believe anything. So if I said to you, uh, Brad, I'm picking up your grandfather, and he drove a blue Cadillac. And, uh, and you go, and if you now, if you were cynical, you'd go, no, it wasn't, it, it wasn't blue, it was off blue. You're wrong. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. they wouldn't give it to you. They'll find something to tinker with to make it. So it, I don't, won't even try to convince or talk with the cynic. Also, just having an open mind to it that I'm not trying to show you that I have more power than you, but take a look at this. Maybe there's a message there that uh, that your grandfather wants to convey. And if you don't believe in the woo-woo part of it, look at it as, you know, maybe you're supposed to be buying a new car because that car is going to break down and... <laughs> right. Yeah, you do. Otherwise, you'll be open your years. mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the magic. It's all about the heart. I mean, the heart magic, not just yeah, light hand magic. But make your life magical. Make it miraculous. It exists. Since physics tells us. Quantum mechanics tells us. Uh, basically, uh, we control everything in our brain. The life that we live is the life we believe we live. Yeah. And it's, so if you want to live suffering and complaining and misery, you can because that's where you are. But if you want to change that and have a life of your dreams, you can. 
Yeah, it's the it's the, the observer looking at the wave particle. If you look at it, it's a particle, it's static. If you look at it, it's a wave, it's moving, dynamic. So it depends on how you want to look at it. So if your life is static and you don't believe there's any possibility of growth and psychic stuff and I want to stay in my poverty mentality and lack and you guys are full of it and angry, that's where you live. Yeah. Then learn to love it. <laughs> or you can change your mind, right? I was at an event and for the, maybe the first hour there was a guy complaining, oh, I'm sick, I feel so sick, I got the flu, blah, 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 blah. And finally I said, you know, I have some herbs that'll take care of that. And he goes, oh, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I never heard, he never complained again after that. Sure, but sure. it was like people, you know, they, sadly, you know, they, they identify with the lack, with the negatives, what's not, what, as opposed to what can be or what is. Being grateful, you know, that's that's uh, right there is. Yeah, that's uh, we're shifting a little bit the, uh, on, on topic, but it, it's true. If either you believe it or you don't, um, there's a program that I teach. Paul sheely has got this thing called Abundance for Life, and a segment in it. It's called Solutions Focus, and it's not where you take a problem and try and fix it. It's right. you wipe the slate clean and you reinvent, and you go from a solutions mindset. Because Einstein, I think it was Einstein that said you can't create. There are no uh, solutions within the current problem, current yeah, mindset you, of the problem. You yeah. can't cre solve a problem with the mind that created it kind of thing. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so you got to exactly. jump out of that. And uh, so I invite people to open your mind a little bit and think that maybe this psychic, intuitive kind of thing is a real deal. And that's why and you go it. to a psychic, because they can help you think outside of the box. They can right. pick up subtle potentials. You know, we're, we're not God, the psychics are not God, but we pick up the potentials of what, you know, the paths that can be there. And you can choose to act on them or not. So it just helps you think of things that, uh, you know, we have low self-esteem as a, as a nation, as a culture, as a, as a world, because of the darkness that we've come out of. We think limited. And you go to a psychic and they say, oh, here's your best self. Why don't you develop that? You, uh, I'm getting the sense that you uh, have a, a knack for producing uh, music. And you go, well, yeah, but I'm not so good. I go, no, but I'm sensing you really do good at that. Why don't you try it out? You know, And they go, well, you know, there is an event coming up, and they asked me to do it, and I turned it down. Maybe I'll do it. That's an example of how a psychic would help you Awaken and test out your, 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 your higher nature, your better guess. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a life coach or a spiritual coach or even a physical coach. They see things like, like say, for example, physical fitness. We'll take it down to something that's tangible. <laughs> physical okay. fitness, and if a person is lifting or doing push-ups and you see that when they do the push-up, they're a little bit crooked, right. they're weak in one arm. you got to strengthen that arm up and balance it out. Right. And a coach can see that, but you can't see it. Even if you're looking in the mirror, you can't totally see it. So maybe intuitively somebody needs to see your spirit. And when you'd say, I'm thinking about getting into music, and that person lights up and you see the spirit, and then they right. go, yeah, but I'm not that good. You say, no, no, right. no, you're on fire there if you look at it. And if you're a really good psychic, you'll, you'll catch a piece of evidence like, didn't your grandmother once give you, tell you or give you a gift? holy cow, you know, just to really give them the confidence that I really did have this gift because I do remember my grandmother, blah, 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 whatever. All right. You know, that's when it's, because a psychic, the best psychic is one who gets out of their own way and just let the messages come through, either you know, a vision or they hear something or they feel something. Uh, those are like the three main ways. You might smell something too. Yeah, and a similar thing um, happened with me with where things have happened as, as a child that I wasn't aware of because you end up blocking them because you're, you know, five or eight years old. You don't really remember the situation. But then you realize that later on in life, holy smokes, I've been doing that my whole life and now I'm conscious of it. But if I don't have someone to tell me that, right. I'm still going to be in the darkness until I all, all of a sudden go... You know, is it possible that when you're a kid, your uh, your parents used to leave you, and then they'd go out and leave you? And I thought, well, yeah, but isn't that kind of normal? And oh my God, I've got abandonment issues. 
<laughs> yeah. I, mean, I had that. When I was a kid, I used to get dreams that I had multiple sets of parents. One behind the other couples would put on masks and say, we're your parents. And they'd give the masks to the next couple. We're your parents. It was a very troubling dream that was recurring. And over the years, it changed to other similar recurring dreams. Eventually, when I was 18, my parents were passed away in a car accident. So I was being prepared through these dreams. And then we had several sets of people who acted as our parents. That was the, that's the end of that part of the story. So all those dreams came true. I was getting psychic messages since you know, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. And even into high school, when I was learning to drive, I'd have dreams about car accidents with my, with my parents' car. And even in life, I saw it happen. So I didn't think this was not a gift. You know, if I say I'm a psychic, it's not because I think well, I'm Superman. It's like it took me 40, 50, probably more than 50 years to realize that I could do something good with it. Because I didn't, it was not a gift as a kid. That was not fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So on yeah. that situation, that's more predicting the future or understanding that the future is going to be happening as opposed to looking what grandma made green sprinkles on the cookies. You're looking out to what's going to be happening. Like, I'm, re I'm really into the time thing because time is just a preconceived belief. There is really no right. past and there is no future. There's just now and then now goes into the future. But the past, there's nothing you can really do about it unless you want to change your perception of what actually happened in the past and then relive it. But it, uh, the, I'm really into the time thing, so I got these little, I got this cool little uh, sundial that we bought. It's got a little compass in there, and you can adjust it for the different areas of the world, wherever you're planting your little thing. But I got all these little hourglasses and stuff over here, and time is a pretty cool thing to me. It's pretty fascinating. If you think about it, we all have the same amount, and it's the same for everybody on the whole planet, unless you uh, go out into the ethers and you get into eternity and then time doesn't really matter anymore, does it? <laughs> time is, uh, the past is good for a psychic because we can say things that you can validate. Right. You start to trust us. When I get into my shamanic or energy healing, then I can take you, as you said, into the past and, re and reverse the issue that happened and give you a different outcome. Right. Well, that's it. Uh, my wife mentions that too. So, like, if you're afraid to cross a uh, if you're afraid to cross a bridge, and you're going on vacation, you have to drive over the bridge. I would take you back, shamanic journey, to the time where somebody threw you off a bridge, and we would make it happen such that they never did throw you off the bridge. Right. And then you drive across the bridge. Too. Interesting you bring that up. I was uh, going to redo that. My my uh, I lived in Asheville, North Carolina, for a while, and there's a place there called Biltmore Forest, where the Biltmore Hotel is, and all that kind of stuff. And I was going to recreate myself with a family of royalty. And I was going to be Sir Arthur Bradley of, uh, what was it called? It was called uh, of Forest Biltmore. <laughs> so I was going to rebuild my life as a family of royalty. And I never got around to fit, finalizing all that. But I did buy the crown. Can you see that crown back there? A little vaguely. There's a crown right, where is it? Right the there. Crown. Oh, right there, okay. Yeah, right next to the fountain. There's a little oh, cast yeah. iron crown I bought. You'll have to start wearing that during your <laughs> well, sessions here. <laughs> exactly. Well, I like, sure. You know, you're, you're, you brought up a really interesting point because usually people come for shamanic journeys to get over things, but you're using it proactively to create a life in the past so it'll be easier to be that in this life. Yeah, again, because there is no past, there is no future, there's only now. So how do you want to be in this moment and then and then that will result in a different future it's almost like what i had talked about before that solutions focus you wipe the slate clean and right. build whatever you want to build <laughs> this is interesting all this stuff does kind of fall into its same we we're going to talk about the psychic ability and now we're talking about shamanism and this falls into the whole meditation thing where you get into a neutral space to be able to create whatever you want as far as your mindset and it falls it into business. Very cool. Astrology, because you can look at your past and, and see what happened in the past, and you can forecast the future with your astrology. I do something called destiny readings, where they're the, the biggest planets, Saturn, uh, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. They move so slowly when they change a sign or a house, you feel it because it changes your whole life. Because they don't. That's it for the next 
30 years or something. And so I, I'm on the lookout for those things because when they happen, you go, holy cow, I better get my, my ducks in order for this change. So on that, on that note, I want to bring up a thing because um, part of what I like to do is bring this whole woo-woo spiritual thing down to a grounded reality thing because some people think, well, how can Jupiter have anything? Jupiter is a huge planet. It's got to have a lot of gravity. And if you think that the moon can move the ocean in tides, and if our bodies are like 90% water, Jupiter's going to do something to you, right? <laughs> well, there are actually some uh, top astrologers that I know that are actually conducting scientific research. And it's a matter of um, how often every time Pluto does ABC, DEF happens. And if it happens with enough times that you can, with 0.005% margin of error, that's a scientific result. So I just interviewed, do you know the name Perry Marshall? We don't think so. Yeah. He wrote a book called, I think it's 8020 or 2080. It's about uh, internet marketing and Google ads yeah, and all that kind of stuff. Well, he's got a new book he just wrote called Evolution 2.0, and it talks about the golden mean and the patterns be within the Nautilus, and it's common in pine cones and pineapples and all that stuff. Right. And he says that the, uh, the evolution and the creation theories are both right. And you can actually measure what's going on with the golden mean, um, so, uh, what do you call it, formula, Right. And it's, it's, it's happening. <laughs> Science meets woo woo. Well, that, that, that is the, the, sh the shamans around the world, uh, particularly when I was in uh, Ecuador, in the rainforest there, the Amazon rainforest, they have a, they call it the Eagle Condor prophecy. Have you heard of that? Yeah, sure. My wife, uh, my wife is a shaman, so I hear about all that stuff all the time. So that's what it is. The eagle and the condor, science and spirit, are meeting for the first time. Right. And I'm, I, I call it also the Aquarian age because the female energy is coming in and the, the logic and the bulk and the conquering is going away and the collaboration and the cooperation right. and the, the heart-centered energy is, is being more dominant now. And that's why we just had that with Trump and Hillary. And I don't know how Trump got in there, but <laughs> it, it, things are going to change. They're happening right now. They're, they're on that cusp, I think. Yeah, I think, I think. Uh, it's, well, it started in 2012, and it's just getting stronger and stronger. Yeah. I exactly. feel just about the last few weeks, we've actually somehow crossed a point. I don't have anything uh, astrologically yet. I haven't found it to validate it, but my own experience and my clients' experiences, we're basically in the point of no return. We can't let our, we won't be able to let our negative or limited thinking rule us anymore. Cool. Looking forward to it. <laughs> well, with that good positive note, let's sign this one off and uh, beam it up to the universe so people can find it. All right. So, Swami, Orange Cowboy, I appreciate you taking the time, and we'll do more of these. It's very fun talking with this kind of stuff and uh, bridging the gap. You know, part of my mission is to move the online chatter back into real-life activity, and perhaps you and I will meet in person someday soon. Okay, Brad. Joy, joy, joy. Thank you. Peace.